Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today in this video, we'll be talking about this very interesting paper that I've been seeing all around on my LinkedIn that is titled as Efficient Few Short Learning Without Prompts. This is from researchers from Hugging Face, Coher.ai, TU Dumpstart, Emergent AI Labs, and Intel Labs. So this paper has taken at least my LinkedIn feed with a wave. And people have been talking all around in terms of its implementation, the summary of this paper, and the pain that it actually solves. So yeah, let's see what this hype is all about. And let's start with the abstract. So this paper is in the space of few short learning, where the general idea is like you don't have large enough humanly labeled data for training a supervised model. You just have few well curated sample data for each of the classes in case you're trying to do a classification problem. Then how do you go about training a system in an efficient manner? So this paper proposes SetFit, which is Sentence Transformer Fine Tuning which is an efficient and prompt-free framework for few short fine-tuning of sentence transformers. Okay, so the idea is to first get to embedding representation that understands your dataset and then top of that go about training for any downstream task. So it's a two-step process. So the first step is to kind of use a pre-trained sentence transformer model, fine-tune it on your label dataset which is like 10 to 15 per class label because we're talking about few short scenario. So the fine-tuning of the sentence transformers happen in a contrastive learning way, after which you can use the existing data for training a classification head on top of that. Because now you already know a method to generate rich text embeddings, so you can simply train a classification head to classify into one of your predefined classes. So yeah, that's the entire idea. And the way it differs from existing few short methods which are PET and PEF is like the existing methods require the use of large-scale models for achieving high accuracy numbers. And not only that, but also a human to kind of curate the prompts with which the hidden structures of the language models can be utilized. But again, on contrary to all of this, this paper doesn't require prompt. And since we're talking about few shots, so we are expecting fewer number of labels to already exist with us. So how can we make use of that, extrapolate our data, fine tune our embeddings, and then eventually learn ahead that does a classification or any other downstream task is the end goal of what they propose. So that's pretty interesting. So let's see this figure to understand how exactly it compares to in case of supervised model trained with all the examples and the way it scales as we increase the dataset size. So on the x axis you see number of labeled samples per class and y shows the accuracy number. So as we go from 0 to 60 samples we can see both Roberta large as well as set fit has an upward trend. But the clear advantage what you can see right is at this level which is that with even samples less than 20 per class, SetFit accelerates to its optimal accuracy pretty fast. And with just 10 to 20 samples, you are close to getting 90%. Whereas it would require many more samples for the Roberta model to adjust its weights accordingly and learn more meaningful things about the downstream task. So yeah, that way we can clearly see the impact that this method has. And also when compared to Roberta large with all the examples, we're getting close to some 90, 95% accuracy which again is kind of expected, right? Because that is a full-fledged model that you're training in a supervised setting, so that is likely to get higher accuracy numbers. But we are talking about the scenario when you don't have enough labeled data, then what is the best option for you? So clearly SetFit looks like a great choice. So with that said, let's move forward and see what exactly does it do. So this is how the entire two-step process looks like. So this is step one, which is the fine-tuning phase. And then you have the classification head training, which is the step two. So you start off with some few short pre-training data. So let's say if you're doing a binary classification problem between science and technology, as in if an article belongs to science or technology domain. So this is your text. And similarly, you curate, let's say 10 samples for this class. And for C2, you again curate 10 more samples. So now you have 10 samples for each class. The next step is to kind of train a sentence transformer that will fine tune the existing representation on data based on your domain on which we are trying to do the text classification task. So this is done using contrastive learning. We'll come to that in a moment. But once that is done, you freeze that model and just tune the classification head for it to know whether it belongs to class one or class two. So that is the second level of tuning that is done just on the head section. So here they train a logistic classifier in case of binary classification. Cool. So now let's jump on to see this contrastive learning mechanism. So the basic idea that contrastive learning actually brings onto the table is saying if you have a sample 1 and you have sample 2 
and let's say these belongs to the same class which is of sports and these are two sentences so ideally when transform the transformed version of these sentences should be still close to each other as in compared to if i club let's say sentence one with sentence three and where sentence one belongs to class c and sentence two belongs to let's say class c1 where c is from sports and and c1 is from politics let's say then ideally the transformed version of these sentences are not that close or in other words we can say they should be away from each other in that high dimension space so the sentences that belong to same class should be pushed towards each other and the sentences that are from different classes should have a repelling behavior in their transformed version so this is what contrastive learning is all about so what the doer here is so let's say we have k labeled samples in total where let's say d is the data set where x i and y are sentences and their class labels so you have r positive triplets where this is the notation for a positive triplet for class c where x i and x j are sentences from same class that's why you have a label of one whereas if x i and x j are from different classes then this makes up your negative triplet and that's why the third value over here is zero so for creating this data set where you have a pair of positive sample and a pair of negative sample it's like consider a scenario of binary classification where you have five samples for topic of politics and five text samples that represent sports so if you choose any two random samples which is nc2 which is in this case 10c2 which comes out to be 10 into 9 divided by 2 2 5s are 10 total number of 45 samples is what you'll get and as you increase this number let's say 10 samples for politics and 10 samples for sports Accordingly, this extrapolation will happen and, and your training data size will increase, which you'll use to eventually train your sentence transformer in a contrastive way. So the contrastive loss is defined as minus log e to the power similarity between any two samples from positive class. Let's say if it's xi and xj, both are from same class, divide by summation across whatever is your batch size, you iterate over that and then e to the power similarity between x i and x k where k i traits or the other class so the overall idea is you need to maximize this upper term this one and minimize the similarity between two samples from different class which means minimizing the e to the power that's there in the denominator so once this pattern is met the overall loss would decrease so if you take an example let's say in two cases where the upper numerator is e to the power 0.9 similarity and denominator is fixed let's call it as k and other scenario is e to the power 0.7 similarity and still the denominator is same which is k so this calculates to 2.45 divided by k this calculates to 2.01 divided by k so since k is common so we need not worry about it so eventually this becomes minus log of 2.45 and this becomes as minus log of 2.01 so which makes this as a smaller entity and that is what we wanted right so yeah that is how you go about training your sentence fine-tuning function using contrastive loss once that is done the next step as we saw right was to train a classification head which is not very easy right because you already have a sentence embedding model to which you pass a xi which is a sentence pass it through that transformation function and you get an embedding of let's say 768 dimension for example so then you simply just use that pass it to logistic regression model and do the classification so yeah that is it about how you train the classification head okay so i think yeah we are done with this paper now now we have experiments so yeah it was interesting to see using contrast loss function to learn sentence embeddings with an inherent extrapolation that it adds in bloating up the training size and then eventually training your entire system for any downstream task which in this case was classification so yeah, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with your friends to whosoever might be interested in such content. And we are very close to hitting 6,000 subscribers. So smash that subscribe button if you still haven't. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.